When I look back on my life and say, what, what made me, how come I'm a scientist? Why am I a scientist? Um, I, th I look back and I remember what really intrigued me as a kid. I was just curious, curious about everything. I started studying the solar system using telescopes um, on, at, in very exciting places like Hawaii um, and then had the opportunity to work on space missions studying things all the way from comets to asteroids and, um, and other small bodies and surfaces in the solar system. At Goddard Space Flight Center, I was their chief for higher education, so that's the equivalent of a dean, and I was managed the intern programs for undergraduates and graduates. So I, I've had many opportunities um, not only to explore the solar system in different ways, but also to mentor and work with young people who are developing and, and will become the scientists of tomorrow. Well, I'm fortunate enough to have been with the Dawn team since we wrote our second proposal. And it's been quite a thrill and quite a ride to, to be part of the mission from the beginning and now to its peak and coming up on its, on its last hurrah. So when we got to Ceres, we started seeing these structures that we hadn't seen elsewhere on the, anywhere else in the solar system. A bright mesa, um, and structures in the center of a crater that turned out to be water softener, sodium carbonate, the simple thing that, a, that we put in water softener. And we sort of said, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. There had to have been water there to form this, and yet there's no water seen on the surface now. But, but that was the presence of these carbonate deposits in that the big crater named Okator um, told us that there was aqueous, water-rich activity um, on Ceres. So that was evidence confirming our suspicion. So it's really exciting. It's a brand new world, and, and it's really fun to compare it with other things in the solar system and see that Ceres itself is a unique dwarf planet.